Hey guys! Okay, welcome back to my channel. As the title says today, I'm going to be talking to you about pre-vet stuff, everything I wish I knew when I was an undergrad, even graduating high school, just as a pre-vet before vet school. Now that I'm looking at myself on camera, I look like I just went like dirt back riding, my little bandana. I know my hair is like all over the place. It's like a wash day, but you know, everyone wants you to play the part and like look like you're in vet school or look like a veterinarian. So let me do like, you know, YouTube bait and look like I'm in the vet world. Okay, back here with the black scrub so it like still matches my outfit. I mean, barely, I barely look different, but I do have on a scrub top now. So anyways, without further ado, um, I decided to make this video just because I do get a lot of people um, that ask me questions, like even outside of SG, just going to vet school. And um, I know like originally my page started off being a lot about SGU, which if you're new to my channel, you don't know where SU is. St. George's University is a vet school down in the Caribbean. It's in Grenada, it's on a Caribbean island, which I'm gonna kind of address that later on in the video. But I just wanna be able to like make this relatable to anyone who wants to pursue a vet you know career whether you go in state or out of state i'm sitting outside um i'm out here with my cat and my dog more so my, watch my cat to make sure he doesn't jump over the fence contrary to popular belief he does not know that he can jump over the fence so here's odin and that there is toulouse he sees the birds hey odin yeah anyways i just chill out with him out here for about like 20 30 minutes a day but that's not what this video is about Honestly, like many people out there who are going into vet med, it's all I've ever wanted to do. I've always wanted to be a vet. I've always loved animals. I mean, my parents say since I was about four years old, like I've been saying like I wanted to be an animal doctor. Um, when I was like nine, I started watching Grey's Anatomy with my mom. I've always loved the medical field, like surgery and all of that. Like honestly, like if I was a backup career, it would probably be a human doctor. I was not one of those people who applied to med and vet school. Like I did know I wanted to be a vet, but like I just, I have like a passion for the med field. Like, too just the healthcare feel like my girlfriend's in medical school and like everything she learns is so fascinating to me like if i could get an md and a dvm at the same time i would or like get an md later down the line not gonna do that though but um anyways not what this video is about um but my point is that like i've always loved animals i've always wanted to be a vet my mom's like family vet when she was a little girl had told me when i was like 16 he would like let me come volunteer come work for him so i did because his his ideology was always like you need to get practice in the field and make sure this is what you want to do right off the bat i wanted to the euthanasias the blood um the surgery like even getting like bit and scratched like none of that ever turned me away so like this was just always my calling and i don't diss anyone who's like in the tech field who's a groomer who's a vet assistant you know a vet nurse all those things like that's wonderful like and i respect it because i'm a vet tech been a vet tech since i was 16 and i'm 20 i'm about to be 23 in a month and i will never forget my humble beginnings but i personally always knew i wanted to be the doctor i wanted to figure out what was wrong i wanted to be the one who calculated the doses and as a tech you get used to the experiences and you get used to like saying like oh that's hyperthyroid that cat is so skinny it's losing weight i bet it's hyperthyroid you know but you don't really get why it's happening and that's one thing i love about vet school is now i'm starting to understand why I've always wanted to be a vet. It was never like an enlightening situation or one moment, you know, I say this animal on the side of the road. Like, no, I've always wanted to be a vet. But I know for everyone, being a vet is not their first choice. It wasn't their first choice, or they always loved animals, but they never really thought they could make it. Um, and that's okay. Like, if that's you, that is okay. Like, trust me, like, I'm pretty sure half the people in their careers never imagined themselves in it initially. But that was just me. That's what got me started. And I mean, it is a lot and so i will say to like anyone pursuing this even if you're in high school watching this middle school like a little kid um you can do it and it's gonna be a lot of work it's gonna be a lot of school but just like every lawyer every doctor every engineer like it takes work it's not easy if everyone if it was easy you know everyone would do it and so that's just like what i tell people like and i know it's a lot of work and i'm almost halfway done with vet school once i'm done i'm done with school forever but it's so worth it The next thing that I would tell anyone who's like, especially an undergrad, but like even to my old self, is to enjoy undergrad. Like, vet school is a lot, and it takes a lot of time. And a lot of the free time that you have an undergrad, you're not gonna have in vet school. So if I could like go back and tell like my old self, I'd be like, chill out, you know, like enjoy undergrad. And I feel like, first of all, I didn't even do that great in undergrad. And I call myself studying all the time, even though what I, I was doing back then wasn't really studying. But, you know, enjoy undergrad. 
you know, join clubs, join that fraternity or sorority, do things, go travel. Because in vet school, med school, it's gonna take so much of your time away. And so like, I would just like go back and say like, do well, do your diligence, study. If you can learn how to study well, but also enjoy the freedom that you're having. Because once you're in vet school, those four years are gonna be like, hiring it's going to be so much work and you want to be able to have said you did x y and z when you were in college before you get out in the real world enjoy college is what i'm saying speaking of college if you are in high school about to go into undergrad or even if you're in undergrad and you're worrying about like if you're on the right path um i get asked a lot and i was asked this when i put it on my instagram um, you know some topics I should discuss what's the best major to do honestly vet schools don't care what your major is as long as you get the prereqs done you could be a music major you could have finished school six years ago with a business or like a communications major but as long as you get those prereqs whether you're in college or whether you finish college and you're going back you just have to have those prereqs done I will say anything animal science related animal nutrition anything like that like um, biological or like pre-medical sciences those usually are going to help because you're going to like take anatomy, you're going to take physiology, especially if you can get into an animal science program if your school has that. You might take reproduction or nutrition or just animal management. That all helps. It comes back. Um, sometimes you don't learn it as in detail in vet school because like, you know, you can go out into the real world being like an animal science major. But I would just say like, you know, if you can, if those are available. But if you go to a smaller school and, you know, biology is the only thing you can do, um, you know, that's fine. They don't really care about majors. And then that goes into another question is that like, you know, what are some important classes to take? And again, like you just have to take your prereqs every now and then, you know, depending on your school, they might require that one weird class. But for the most part, like that weird class might be nutrition that's required for X this, this school. Um, I would say for me personally, in undergrad, organic chemistry was the hardest, and I think that's across the board. Um, most schools, organic chemistry is hard, but biochem gets people, genetics gets people, all of those, they're the hard sciences, they're weed out classes. They're made to get the people who aren't willing to work, aren't willing to study, aren't willing to stay up and try and try and try, because, you know, they want to weed it out. They want to make sure you really want this. And this is coming from someone who did not do great in undergrad. I got my first F in undergrad. I, got, I failed a first class. I had to repeat something. I had never felt anything in my life. Like, high school was a breeze. I never had to try. I never had to study. Graduated four in my class. Like, and I got to undergrad and I didn't know how to study. I failed stuff. Like, it was sad. I was, like, frustrated. I mean, like, I feel like all of us are like that. But, you know, I just say, like, again, have fun study you know don't really focus on what classes you're taking what majors of course it's gonna help you if you can take your zoology your you know nutrition your repro all that type of stuff but if you can't it's okay just get your prereqs done in-state versus out-of-state when you come numbers wise in-state in-state all the way because you're not gonna be in debt you're not gonna be poor when you come out of school and you're not like it's over double the amount going out of state but i'm not going to say be totally against it i see some people who say they've applied three cycles but they've only applied to one school because they're in state school and I, I just think don't limit yourself if this is truly what you want to do in your life money shouldn't be a factor like yes you're going to be in debt for decades very very many many long years but if it's worth it it's worth it like i'm not in the vet field for money like i know people it's a topic of discussion that vets don't make money but honestly you could pay me five dollars a day in some random country and if as long as i'm helping animals i would do it i'd do it for free honestly uga was my in-state school i didn't get in and it was honestly okay to me because i've always wanted to leave home i've always wanted to travel and i just don't think it's bad and of course me going to a caribbean school some people ask me, is it more expensive? And it honestly comes out roughly to what I would have paid even if I had gone to an out-of-state school. So I don't necessarily think it's bad. So let's get into some like application type stuff. So first, what makes like a good application? Well, they want you to be well-rounded. They want you to have grades. Like obviously like everyone, you need the grades, period. But I won't say grades are impossible because I got in to vet school with a 2.79. I was accepted into SGU and Ross University, which are both Caribbean schools, but I was also waitlisted at Virginia, Maryland. So, you know, there was something right there going in the state. Um, I applied to seven schools. So pretty much like, obviously you want your GPA to be the highest it can be, but I don't want you to be discouraged if your GPA is not amazing. Also, again, you have to have your prereqs. You need experience. 
um, depending on where you live, it might only be small animal clinics. If you're in a city like in New York and stuff like that, but if you're in a rural area, it might be mostly larger mixed animal practices. And so schools do take that into consideration, but any school is gonna wanna see a well-rounded student. They're gonna wanna see that you did small and large. Maybe you did an internship or an externship, you did research. Also in your application experience goes towards um, non-vet and veterinary animal experience so if you worked at a dog hotel you were just like a kennel tech you walk dogs all day that is still animal experiences if you worked in a lab and do research like and it wasn't necessarily vet related but it's still dealing with animals animal related all of that counts um and so i always tell people try to get a mix i didn't have a mix i had years and years thousands of hours of small animal and sgu accepted me and still said you need 200 hours of large animal before we fully accept you so get that in the beginning especially if your school has a large animal department do it second thing is gre scores i get asked quite a bit is when's the best time to start studying for the gre me personally i am a good test taker like standardized tests i don't i do well i did to me the gre was like a sat again i feel that if you give it a few months before your test you should be good i don't think it's something that you need to start like a year or anything but this is also just personal opinions not saying that you should like listen to every single thing i say and just like run with it um but i just don't think it's that hard it's basic math it's basic reading you might need to refresh you know on like pre-cal or anything but that's like the highest level math you might need to like you know refresh on like reading and answering a question I personally like the books that have like practice exams and you time yourself. I think that helps because I think with most people you run out of time. My GRE score wasn't horrible. When I was in undergrad, my advisor told me as long as you can reach the 300 mark, you're good. And my score was a 307 was the highest. A lot of schools, they want you to at least reach the 310 mark, but I've never really had like a score or anything that so I was denied because of my GRE or that I should retake it. I know my girlfriend, she's in medical school and she told me a lot of medical schools do this where you can, you can ask the school to review your application um, like a trial and they'll say like you, you should do this or you should not do this. Um, I don't really know if vet schools can do that, but I would like to think so. And then maybe that could give you insight too if you, you need to retake your GRE or anything like that. So one thing on Vimcast that you will have to do is you'll have to do several essays. Um, a lot of schools will have supplemental applications that might have other essays. Um, you might have to do personal statements, especially for um, especially for scholarships and stuff like that. And one thing I like to say is that like when you're doing those vet applications and they ask you why do you want to be a vet or what do you think you can like contribute to society as a veterinarian or what made you decide to do this, don't say because I've always loved animals. Everyone who's applying to vet school loves animals to some extent and it's like so old. You need to have something that sticks you out from every other candidate that like, you know, is applying, whether that's the reason why. And like for me, I always do mention like this has been something like I've always felt this was my calling, but related back to a certain story, related to the first time like the vet let you, you know, listen to your dog's heartbeat, related back to the first time as a technician and you felt like, you know, accomplished helping the vet, you know, like make it stand out, you know, sh tell a story with it, I guess. You know, in high school, when you used to write essays and your teachers always say, like, make your writing creative, like, this is the time where you need to, like, dig those skills back out and make it creative because you want your personal statement to be personal. You don't want it to sound generic, just like every other person who's applying to vet school. That's my biggest advice on your essays and personal statements. Um, I could do more videos about VimCast, but I don't want this to only be about applying. But if you want a video about, like, the whole vet school application and my whole take on it, you know feel free to message me i get people messaging me all the time or comment below this i know my page is more so about grenade and sgu but i would like to start helping more vet people so if you have any other questions any other tips any other videos please leave that below not here below but yeah um i get a lot of people asking me like what's the best school to go to do exotics um you know should i do small or large or mixed animal you can't go to a school and like only do exotics no matter where you go you have to learn the same things you have to do the dog the cat the horse the cow exotics is a specialty and it's a specialty that more so you're gonna get outside of vet school you do touch on some exotics um usually because like most of the all the navalis have like some sort of exotics and when i say exotics it's like rabbits guinea pigs birds reptile snakes when you want like the zoo medicine and the wildlife and the conservation medicine like most vet schools will have like some research or maybe an externship or you know there's all types of externships that aren't even through schools that you especially nowadays where you can go to thailand africa and south america and do all these things 
but those aren't really in the curriculum. And so I stress this to say that you shouldn't only apply to a school because of their exotics program. Everybody nowadays wants to do exotics, and so it's cool, but for one, those vets have like a low like turnover rate. Like people who get in those jobs don't usually leave. And a lot of times zoos and stuff, they take a very select a few people, like even after you're out of vet school because some people think they want to do that and they really don't but then they don't want to invest in you so you just have to go in that like pretty much no matter where you're going as long as it's avma accredited you're learning the same things and to be honest a lot of people large animal medicine is like the shortage and i mean no one nowadays people don't want to do food medicine people don't want to just be the equine vet most vets are small animal i'm small animal track and i used to think that i wanted to do exotics but now that like i go through it i realize like i, I want a clinic um I want to do small animal, preferably like all feline medicine. But so that's just what I say is that like, you know, even if you put exotics down, not to like discourage anyone, but like um, in school, like, you know, a lot of your coursework is not on that. At least not till you get to clinical rotations and maybe you can go do an externship at a zoo or you can go do something. But like in your coursework, like that's not really in the curriculum. It's not kind of like undergrad where you can go to a school and do this, but not there. Like everywhere you learn the same thing. It might not be the same schedule, but there's not necessarily going to be like classwork on a tiger. That makes sense. Last thing, um, I get asked like, you know, just my whole feel going to the school in the Caribbean, which my whole YouTube page is about that, so I'm not gonna go in depth in it. But I was asked, um, do I personally feel that other vet students or veterinarians look down at Caribbean students? My personal experiences, I haven't. Um, all the vets I've worked under or know are very encouraging. They think it's a great opportunity. They think, you know, it's one of those things that if they were aware of it back in the day, they would have gone. But I do also know vets who said that when they were going to school, the Caribbean was a backup school. It was a place that you went, you know, when you had nowhere else to go. It wasn't accredited, so then you had to come back and take like a vet Odin, a veterinary proficiency exam and stuff like that. Um, and so it's I feel like it's come a long way because you know, Ross, SGU, those Caribbean type schools, now they're accredited and everything. You have your muddy nose all in the camera. Can you back up? Can you, can you? Okay. Um, they're accredited in everything. So most vets I know, they think it's great. Um, some people don't think it's worth the money just with, because it's again, like out of state costs and you could easily stay in the States, get your in-state tuition, um, you know, the cost of the flights and everything. But in my opinion, again, like it still comes out to just what you would pay here. But I had to put him in the house. And then the other thing that I was asked, it's all on me in regards to Caribbean schools was, um, do I think it's harder to get internships? I personally haven't applied to any internships. Externships really don't care, which the difference between externship, internship, externship is like while you're in school, internships is like afterwards, like you're going into your residency or some type of specialty. And I think again, it comes back down to what vet you're under. Do they really respect Caribbean schools? Do they think that the education is on the same, you know, level? I honestly feel like it's who's evaluating your application that would say like oh I'm not choosing them because they went to a Caribbean school but honestly I feel like that stigma is starting to go away but I know it's still out there and I'm not saying that I won't ever encounter it or that you won't ever encounter it but I feel like it is changing I feel that a lot of people are starting to consider SGU and Ross on their first time applications and I'm, I feel like it's starting to be not only a backup school for some people, there are people who are genuinely considering it because they want to travel and because they want to, um, you know, study abroad and like just in our day and time, like traveling is so easy and like to be able to say you studied in a whole other country is like really cool. Um, so yeah it's just your take but so that's just kind of my spiel this video was much longer than i intended it to be but i tend to talk a lot just because i'm like really thorough with what i say but um yeah if you have any other questions any other topics that you would like to see again please leave them below um i know people said they want to see more personal videos um i'm never opposed to making vet videos because that's like my whole life but anyways um be sure to like subscribe and share Again, message me if you need anything, you want my personal advice, any of that jazz, and until next time.